How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Slash Yell. Slash Yell. What are you doing with your tongue there? This, it is, was, this is a family show. It's not a family Good show. Sir. We had this discussion during Quarter Up. All of our I shows know. are marked as explicit. 18 and I, over. We, we, we talked about Fractured, but being whole. Yeah. Uh, I just saw another review <laughs> for Sausage Party, which is like, hey, it's actually not half <gasps> oh, bad. I want to see really, it so bad. I really Don't ruin it. See it. Don't ruin I, it for me. Yeah, I, it's fine. Just just know that it is definitely a Seth Rogen comedy. I'm going to watch it tomorrow morning for like five bucks because I'm poor. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this week on Slash Hill, you'll notice that we don't have indigo. Instead, we have, uh, what is this animal called, Ed Rock? A capybara. A capybara. We have a capybara wearing a, ch- uh, a Cthulhu fez. That so is, pretty is much it, it's indigo. For me. Yeah, it's, pretty it, much it's indigo. indigo's yeah. last selfie. Exactly. Uh, so <laughs> Indigo is currently in New York doing a wedding reception or something like that. Bullshit, he is. He's at a concert. Oh yeah, currently right now he's at a Blink One Eighty Two concert. <laughs> I think it's like Blink All Time Low and they remember. So I'm a little jealous. Nobody I, cares. I was... Zero zero people care. Uh, how so, was your week? Speaking of nobody caring, we hope you're having fun, Indigo. Uh, speaking of nobody caring, how was my week? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. My week was good. <laughs> uh, I made an ass out of myself at work, but fortunately nobody noticed. And, and what else did I do? Repeat it constantly on I, social media. I I, I, did, I haven't said anything about it on any social media except for you say it right now. This show, except for this show. That's it. It's only the show. Uh, I also bought a Keurig, which I'm really excited to get. Like unnaturally excited to get this Keurig. Uh, just coffee at, on demand is going to uh, get my. Um, I have a Keurig. I can agree. It's, it's quite nice. Do you? Yeah. You had a Keurig this whole time. That's why I told you to get the little cup with the uh, with like to put your own grounds in because that's what I do. That's how I got my that's how I get my coffee really fast every time because Keur- I'm fucking lazy. Keurigs no one- are funny because they have DRM on their little cups that you put inside the Keurig to get your coffee. And DRM coffee is yeah, one of the it's DRM things coffee. It's the fucking dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. So obviously the goal is for them to for you to buy their cups only so that they get all the money, but. The DRM works in such a way, like, okay, so the DRM has, the the coffee machine has a sensor in the part right above the cup, and the sensor shoots infrared light at the cup, and then another sensor, like, measures the refracted light, and then based on that, it can tell whether it's a Keurig cup or not. And so basically what people do is they just take a Keurig, like, actual cup, and they cut the top off. And they just tape it on the inside of the machine so that it constantly reads. Hacks. It's constantly reading the same fucking lid. And then it just <laughs> always works. You can put a fucking dog in there and it would like shoot water into it. That was horrible. I shouldn't have said that. That was a weird analogy. <laughs> <analogy. laughs> Anyways, about coffee in a cup that's like maybe an, a, a three quarters of an inch in diameter. And I don't know. Dog. They're purse I, dogs, right? That's a thing. I'm not touching that with a with a ten foot pole. How was your week, Doc? Uh, very hot. I spent most of my week printing out some t-shirts, and we did a little Derby Derby doll Comic-Con. For those of you who don't know, roller derby is a sport which skaters will go on a banked or flat track, and it's a little like, oh, yeah. uh, and you score points by getting past certain markers and players and whatnot. It's the most base way I can explain it. But Los Angeles has a Derby doll league, and they're awesome. They had a, an exhibition with their lower division players called the Fresh Meat, or the, the Baby Doll Brawl. And they decided instead of their normal vendors where it's like, hey, derby doll uh, skates and derby clothing, they wanted to have a quasi Comic Con. And so I jumped on the on the, on awesome. the bandwagon, showed up there, and inadvertently ran into the voice actor of Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. So That's that was OP. something. There's also OP. no ventilation there. So as awesome as that place was, we were put in an area with no airflow in 108 degree heat. Ugh. I'm still a little like woozy ish from yesterday because we it- were there for, we were there from like four. Five to eleven. That sounds like a great breeding ground for bo. Oh, Just you know, people it wasn't skating that bad. around and it's super hot. It wasn't that oh. bad because where the skaters were, there were fans. Oh, or okay. right outside, there was like food trucks. But just in the middle, where the vendors were. They couldn't turn on the fans because of energy consumption being so high in L.A. Oh, in the summer. Oh, God, shut like, your they turned mouth. on those fans, they would have blown a fuse. And I said, I even said, like, that's eh, not that bad. That's not how goes, fuses work. I'm just going to say that. I know, I know. But this is what the explanation was to me. And I said, well, that doesn't make sense. But even then, you <laughs> Wait, they're saying bit. people <laughs> all across L.A. are using too much power. And so if we turn on our fans, we will blow a fuse. Well, <laughs> no. that's like, actually supposedly yourself. happened. The last, the, last, the last bout, they tried to have all the fans on. The power went out through the entire building. Yeah, I understand that they could blow a fuse if they turn on too much stuff, but it has nothing to do with the rest of L.A. I'm just going to say No, that. no, no. They're just – they're using that as like a thing. Like Yeah, as an excuse. It's called an excuse. Right? We, we call those excuses in the real world where somebody's making up a reason for something that's total bullshit just to get I'm out of doing something. I'm not calling them on their bullshit. I'm bullshit. just saying why it was so sweaty. 
Look, if you're having an you're event, so if you're having an event, if you're having an event and you can't cool the building that you're anyways, look, hold on. Oh, We're it's getting like, it's like it's like it's like a uh, anime expo with Kensha Hall. I mean, I'm go- I want to go be at exhibit at Kamikaze in about a month and a half or so. And that takes place the same place Anime Expo did. And Anime Expo shoved their artist alley into Kensha Hall, which had no ventilation and had here's, people fainting. Here's so my I'm thing. I'm a little worried about Kamikaze. Here's my thing about cons. And I, I wrote this in the very first article that I wrote for Q Times, which was a review of my very first con. And it was Long like. Beach, yeah? Yeah, it was like Long Beach Comic Con from the eyes of a con virgin or something it was called. And so I wrote. Basically, the only job you have as somebody who has a con- or who's hosting a convention is to provide a space for like-minded people to share ideas or to entertain each other or whatever. If you only provide them a space with which to do that, you've pretty much done 90% of your job. No and then the other 10% out. is just like making sure that they don't get robbed. Like it, it's it's really not hard. They don't because even really when you need to put, do that because honestly, yeah. it's every man for himself in the case of safety. Well, yeah. I mean, they're going to protect you, but... When you get large enough, like it, it it's kind yeah. of out the window. But like the point is that all those people there that all like the same exact thing are going to fucking entertain each other and then they'll go out into the world True. and be like, this con's great. Like, because it was for them. You don't have yeah. to do shit. If you can't fucking cool the building, you shouldn't be putting on a fucking convention. All now, right? To be fair, this is fucking your opinion on it. I don't mind it. I had a great time at the Derby Comic Con. I love roller I derby. Will. It's super weird and awkward and fun. I will gladly go back and do another con. Despite the heat, I'm hoping it's like in November when they do the next one. So it's a little cooler. So I, I thought it was super fun. That was the only bad part about it. And it wasn't even that bad. It was... It was it was completely bearable. It was which yeah. is the best part. You shouldn't describe events as bearable. You should describe well, them as it wonderful. It wasn't the event. It was the heat. The heat made it worse. Like actually being there in the con and talking to people, or sorry, in in the vendor space and talking to everybody and talking to the skaters and just shooting the shit with them. Everybody that reviewed dolls were super fucking cool. So the heat didn't bother me. The setting up was the bad part because I was running around and it was hot. True. Being like once I got all set up, I had a fucking blast like always. So. I mean, we've been talking a lot about just random shit like that, and that's mostly because, to be honest, this week's news, there's not a whole bunch of it. There's a few big yeah. ticket items, but we're also not in a huge rush, and Indigo is not here, so we kind of like to just see mellow how we're out. doing a little more in depth. Yeah, yeah we're mellow a little, out a little. Mellow, little mellow. Indigo brings the energy up. We're, you know, we're going to bring it down. We're going to do a slow dance with you guys. We're going to, like, put our oh, hands bow, on your back. Bow. We're going to slowly slide our hands down until we get a nice little squeeze of your butt. That's how we're going to dance. All right. Can you? All right. All right. I'm sorry. I got, I got, I got, you got carried up. away? You got, okay. Yeah. So let's move on to Slash Zone. Slash which Zone. Which is this week's discussion of MMO <laughs> news. MMOs that you can play right now if you really want to. Well, may, maybe not every MMO we're going to talk about right now. <laughs> yeah, maybe you shouldn't go play Black <laughs> Desert Online because they're having some problems, some huge fucking and problems. It's getting worse, man. Yeah. This week brought out something crazy. So we mentioned last week that players were talking about maybe getting their chargebacks on to get, take their money back from Dom. And also EU players talking so, about suing them under yeah. uh, false pretenses for false advertising. Yeah. Before we get into the meat of it, let me just really quickly explain what a chargeback is. So when you issue a chargeback, you're basically telling your bank or whatever credit institution that you paid through uh, to retrieve your money for you from the vendor. So basically, you're forcibly taking your money back from them. Now, there are two reasons to charge something back. Either your card got stolen or... Or um, your like identity got stolen. Like it's it, it chargebacks. Chargebacks, but most often you see it because of that. Chargebacks are designed for those things. Or the the second thing would be uh, that you paid for something. Like for example, on eBay, like uh, you paid for uh, a sword. Like there was an eBay listing for a sword, and it's like made of metal, totally sharp, super usable, awesomeness. And then you get your sword, and it's plastic. And so you charge them back because y- that's not what you paid for. You paid for yeah. a metal sword. So. That's what the chargebacks are designed to uh, remedy. And they're also typically within a window of time, too. Sure, yeah. So you can't just go back from your Amazon purchase from five years ago and get a chargeback yeah. for that. But it is a long period of time, and I think that yeah. varies based on the institution that you're dealing with. But Yes. Uh, it, it's it's, also at the it's not like a day. Of, it's longer than that. <laughs> it's also at the discretion of, of, the, of the institution you're getting it back from because right. you know that could actually negatively, Im- negatively impact your standing with it. It could delete your account. And it's all ties together because – Players are starting to charge back from any purchases they made from Dom. And Dom does not like that very much. And, and just to be clear, Dom, because I don't think we've ever said that name on this show for some reason, uh, they are the people who run Black Desert Online. D-A-U-M. Yes. D-A-U-M, yeah. 
D-A-U-M. So what's happening now is, well, like I said, if you're legally, tr- if you're trying to get stuff back from like way back when, so if you bought a World of Warcraft sub like in 2008, charging that back not gonna work. can get really bad for the consumer. Most likely it's not going to work. Probably not going to work. No. So Dom sent in an email telling players that they must cancel all chargebacks that they've made by August 22nd of 2016, or they'll face a permanent account ban. I mean, to be honest, if you're going to as far as far back to get a chargeback, you probably won't be that you won't be that mad if you get banned from the game. That's so, like the biggest action they can take as part of a developer with a game. But they weren't like, just they weren't just being like, "Yo, you guys need to pull out your chargebacks." They were like trying to scare people because here's so oh, yeah. they went through and explained everything I just explained about what chargebacks are, and then at the very end they say, uh, "To conclude, requesting chargebacks should be done after." cautious investigation on your part to know all of the possible consequences which a lot uh, of players were doing yeah where a finalized chargeback would lead to withdrawing your game access a canceled chargeback would have no lasting effect on your account so they're basically like trying to like pull back a little bit but right before that they were talking about like if your chargeback is proven to be illegitimate this could go farther than just the denial of your refund your credit score could be impacted credit worthiness attached to each person is usually something mortgage companies and financial institutions will look into before approving credit offering services yeah hey you want to get a car hey you want to get a house hey you want to do certain things they look at your credit score they're trying to like get, and I'm not saying they're like being totally unreasonable. Like that could affect your credit score, but they they super want their money back. <laughs> like that's yeah, that's they, the point yeah, of people, trying to get. People to. want their money back. Dom's like, yeah, no, you're not getting your money back at all. The people are saying, hey, you are lying to us. You added this shit in. This is our this is us telling you that we don't approve of this. And Dom goes, hey, you know what? Just letting you know if. You get chargebacks too many times. You get permanently banned from. No, Desert any. Online, if you do games. any chargebacks. But hey, uh, just letting you know that uh, false chargebacks will screw over your credit score. And, and this is the most like other companies will say something similar with like refunds and whatnot. Where, but they won't straight out say, uh, yeah, your shit will get fucked up if you decide you want to challenge us on it. Because Dom is actually actively fighting chargebacks. And most recently, PayPal has been seeing a big wave and chargebacks with anything purchased in Black Desert Online from Dom. And PayPal, some people were like, oh, PayPal's up in arms, like they're 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 planning this with Dom. And PayPal simply is going, no, the legal terms that we have as part of the US, you agree to, and are are looking into this subject on our own as as our as PayPal, not in associated with Dom. We will give you this back or we won't give you this back. And they're giving reasons like, hey, this is why we did this. This is why we're not giving you money back. This was a charge from like a year ago. It's way past statute of limitations. So people like are, are people are some people are starting to assume that they're kind of in cahoots with Dom. But really, what's happening is Dom is is allegedly, possibly, maybe, kind of, technically not, but also threatening you with the fact that you can the, destroy I, your I don't financial think, credit. No, it, it, I don't think it's going to be taken as a, like a legal threat. I think it's just going to be like, yeah, that's true. They're not. They're not saying they're going to come and kill you. They're just literally telling you the consequences of your actions. Yeah. But, like, here's but the thing. It's also a, th- a very thinly veiled middle finger. Yeah, it is a very thinly veiled middle finger if you read if you read the actual words in the email. It is a very thinly veiled money now, please. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. You don't get your money back from us because you've already spent it. So, here's, fuck you. That's here's, what it really is. Here's the shitty thing, though. Like, this is not an uncommon tactic on the internet. And, and I'm not, not talking about, like between companies for those of you that don't spend a lot of time on twitch uh a lot of donation platforms uh exist and none of them are totally safe from this same practice so there are a lot of people that go fair, none of these things with money transformed when just transferred is completely some of yeah that's correct some of them have gotten better like with agreements with certain you know money handling folks but uh, again it's not it's never going to be a hundred percent safe uh and and it's really sad because like people do it just as a troll in in twitch land like they'll go and give somebody a like you know five thousand dollar donation and then charge it back and what that basically does is it makes it so that the streamer has to pay the processing fee which is a percentage of the donation that they received uh out of their own pocket because they still have to pay that so they're fucked like there's there's nothing they can do they just have to pay that money so it it's kind of shitty that the internet's kind of gotten to this place where people can so easily fuck with each other's money it's not it's not great like 
I don't think that the system that we have for handling financial transactions is really set up to be secure in the online world because that's kind of where a lot of it's happening now. And it's really, really fucking easy to take advantage of it. Yeah. So, you know. But that, to be honest, what do you what do you feel about this whole little recent developments with BDO and Dom and players? I mean, I fucking hate it. I think it's horrible, but I don't think that this is the right way of going about, you know, that kind of. Yeah, this this. And maybe but, that's like, just because I have no money vested. Like, yeah, I, I paid for Black Desert, but I, I wrote that off the second I did it. Like, I didn't expect to play that game a bunch. Uh. And, and I don't like I'm not invested in that game personally the same way I'm, yeah. I'm invested into like wow and a, wild star and a lot or, of a lot of less players and streamers are, are like posting up videos like telling you why what's going on and their thoughts and opinions on it yeah I definitely agree that this is the worst way to go about it but I also don't know how else they can go about it they players feel like Dom's dug themselves a grave and they should lie in it Dom feels like it's doing what it believes is right by them uh, players are then crying foul that it's just milking them dry for money, that it's going against what Dom had originally advertised. And then this literally, I don't know how you interpret this as not a middle finger. This 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 email to, yeah. this, to their to their subscribers. The, the like the gamer kind of like childish part of me wants to just tell them to keep fucking charging them back and see what happens. Cause I Yeah. First of all, I I do think they deserve to go through some kind of turbulence for the shit that they're pulling. Uh but the like professional like adult side of me says like you guys need to calm down a little bit like yeah, this is someone, this is a step you, too far. Yeah, you 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 can't you can't act like this to your consumers because you will always come out with a bigger black eye. So maybe it's better to take your lumps and just yeah. try to figure something else out. That's a little more not agreeable, but a little more workable. Because no, a little more agreeable. This, like they they went too far for their community. Yeah, but they, I mean, yeah, they like, agree obviously. in the sense of, like, they're not going to pull this middle finger email, but still go, like, hey, oh. we understand you're unhappy, but this is the route we choose to take because of reasons. And they have tried to explain it, and, like, oh, this is great for the game. The players are still lashing out, and when I say the players and, and fans of the game, we're such a, we're, like, weirdly eth- uh, ethereal as well as, like, tangible in a sense of, we're tangible in the sense of our subscriber money, t- tangible in the sense of our numbers supporting the game. But we're also weirdly ethereal in the sense that you can't, you can't take us and sit us down in a corner and go, no, you stay right there while we talk this out. You're, once they're excited or angry about something, it's hard to keep them. Yeah, it's hard to get them. It's hard to get them to listen, like because they are just. Yeah. And, and by they, I mean we, because obviously I do this shit all the time too. Maybe not. We all with, do dumb stuff. Not with money, but I, I do get in a situation where a game does something that I don't like, and then I just d- don't listen to the the logic behind it. I'm just like, no, I didn't like it. Like. Why are you doing it? Stop doing it. I didn't like it. What are you doing? Stop. I, I think there's other ways that the player base could probably handle this this stuff with BDO. I, what? I can't think of one. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I it's hard. I agree they probably exist, but I can't think of any. I can't think of any right now either. And I can't think I, – I just know that this email right here, anytime you try to send an email with this content and with this tone. implication yeah. and this tone – you know it's not going to stay in an inbox. It's oh, going to yeah. end up on every fucking public forum. Yeah, of course. And that was not this, the right way to like, do it. And the fact that they're, this whole situation caused them, like, what is obviously a PR disaster, judging by the fact that, you know, the very first game I've ever heard of to have in-game protests is Black Desert. And I'm not saying it never happened before. I'm just saying it's the first one I ever heard of. It's it's this not the highest profile one I've seen. It's not Toronto, a small yeah. thing. It's having your players, like, organize that tightly I, I think t- I against think what, you is not a small thing that is a lot of effort and so the fact that they're going through this situation by just like not regarding the pr that that they're going to generate by emails like this like they're, they're basically just asking for everyone to leave i, I think what said. probably could have happened and i could be wrong could be idealistic is that black desert shouldn't have put a blanket term on the chargebacks and the essential threatening of players credit scores which is now their livelihoods now you've made it even more personal for players but players as much as my my gut reaction last week was like fuck yeah get your money back your better bet was just to leave your better bet was right. just to leave because you spent your money you've had your time and fun and yeah you had fun until you decided you weren't, wasn't fun anymore you know how you vote with your wallet not by taking your money back it's already been spent <laughs> just stop spending your money right and you move on it's just like it's just like you break up from somebody you don't go to their fucking front house with a goddamn poop bag on it, light it on fire, and go, ha, ah, you broke up with me, Julie. I hate you. <laughs> just go, look, okay, it's over. I, I get Hold it. On. Hold on. You know, 
I don't know who Julie is. Hold on. Yeah, I was going to ask, is Julie an ex of yours? No, I just gave like a random name. <laughs> but, I mean, the, the, the more mature thing for that for both parties should have simply been Dom saying, look, this is the they we're going to reiterate our stance again. This is what's happening. We feel bad that you feel that way, but we'll take as much as we can. We'll try to accommodate you guys, but we're just letting you know that there can be issues with it if you choose to take this route. This was more like, hey, you do this. This is what's going to happen, and uh, we need to protect ourselves. Right. Not even that. It's like the middle finger. They should have said, look, this is what's happening to those players who choose to do it. This is what could happen. I'm letting you know. And the players should have just been, you know what? Fine. Fuck it. I spent my time. I was attached. You're not treating me right as a consumer. I don't like it. If someone legally can get uh, the uh, the evidence for, for false advertisement, go that way. Fine. But I'm just going to move on. Yeah. So I have more time that I can spend somewhere else. I should have just done that, and I will do that. That having been said, uh, Black Desert Online and Dame Games or Dam. Can I just call them Dam Games? Because it looks like I, I, I call them Dom because that's what it sounds like to me. Dam Games. Damn, you guys are bad at publicizing Dam games. games. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, Black Desert. Uh, you you had a lot sure of promise, but this. you're you're yeah. We're definitely not done with this story. This story is going to come back probably next week, and there's going to be more people talking about. You know, oh, somebody egged their studio or something. Don't do that. I am not encouraging you to do that on yeah, this. Yeah, no, no one should. There's absolutely no way that I am saying that. Uh, okay, moving on before, you know, stuff. Yeah. Uh, the NCSoft quarterly report. It seems Speaking like. Speaking of money. Yeah, we talk about money a bunch today. Uh, we're going to bring the energy down, but just talking about fucking ass loads of cash so there's obviously as usual a uh, reddit thread regarding the findings in that summary and i actually think that for once they're pretty good it looks yeah. good uh so wild NCSoft, star soft sorry go ahead so, yeah, so nc soft has like lineage wild star uh, guild wars technically blade and soul lineage shoe aeon and there's it's hmm how do you say it in general the nc soft games have done pretty decent this corner quarter not terrible like they're as a whole, they're they are about where they were last quarter. Individually, a few of them have done quite well for themselves. So, so here's here's what the Reddit summary has for it, and some guy had put it pretty well. Was that the Korean, the Korean amount of money coming in is like three times more than any of the revenue from NA and EU combined. Lineage one is still doing better than Lineage two, which, which is have, has been that me. way for a super long time. Yeah, Lineage two is supposed to be the better polished game, and yet. I'm looking at the graphs and the breakdown of the numbers. It's not just a little bit. Like, uh, it looks like Lineage 2 brought in about 19,000, blah, 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 one. I I'm horrible with the numbers right now. But Lineage 1 brought in like 94 something or other. I can't say if it's millions or, or thousands. I I apologize, guys. That's like the worst part of it. Their numbers are like condensed, and I can't tell if it's abbreviation for thousands or millions. It's also uh, in a different currency. Also in, in Korean one, yeah. Yeah. And um, Blade, and, Blade and Soul launching in NA and EU actually brought in double the amount they would have expected, but uh, but then dropped to like 17 million US dollars last quarter. The shocker and the not shocker actually concerns Wildstar. Wildstar is their worst performing IP still. It's right now, it's just kind of the way it's been uh, when you think about it. But they had a great quarter when you think about it. In fact, when I'm reading this, they brought in like 1.8 million US dollars, if I'm reading that right. The numbers could be off. I do apologize if they are off. Um, but the consensus is it seems to be almost double the amount that from last quarter. Yeah. Then so th That includes the Steam launch. It's their worst performing IP, but it doubled its revenue last quarter. So, or this quarter, or whatever, however you say that. Yeah. So, basically, it improved. It is improving, or it was improving. If they see another... Equal growth next quarter, like that could be a good sign for Wildstar's longevity as a whole. Because I yeah. know, like, since the beginning of fucking time, people have been saying Wildstar is going to close, Wildstar is dead, and blah, blah, blah. And this goes back to and players it's... being really knee jerky. Like, the <laughs> moment it gets bad, yeah. throw up the fucking death bells and right. everything. And, and NCSoft and has stuck by Carbine the whole time. And they're letting Carbine still create more and more content despite budget cuts, despite staff cuts. Yeah. And they're turning over something now hopefully even more because they yeah. don't they still have new content coming and they're talking about quality of life improvements soon and they're doing more and more and it doesn't seem like that's the path that and this a is failing studio takes this is way before the new raid like yeah. the new raids aren't even out yet so think of when this data stopped being collected and how much that 
like how little of that content had been released over that period of time. So the fact that there's like all this new content coming soon, maybe it's getting some people hyped. There was no gonna... content in that three month period. The only thing new I mean, there were PTR the videos, right? Yeah. The PTR videos were out, but that's kind of like, you have to know what's happening in order to get to that. Like that, that wouldn't be something that reaches their casual player base. But like this month they released the previews that would have hopefully gotten some people excited and like had them look for that content instead of waiting for it. Uh, so it's entirely possible that, that next month they'll see a larger growth or, yeah. you know, I could be fucking wrong, whatever, you know, shit yeah, happens. Someone put in for like a perspective. If you want to compare Black Desert Online and what they're able to create in the last corner quarter compared to the anti soft games, they roughly racked in about as much as Lineage 2 did, hmm. which isn't bad. Lineage 2 put out some pretty decent numbers. Not as so, good as Lineage 1. For not, some. Yeah, not as good as Lineage 1. So Black Desert Online, we'll see what happens in three months. Yeah, or, right. But uh, it, it's not. It's it's actually a pretty decent quarterly report for NCSoft, and I know NCSoft is like one of the few studios that does this. So we do like to cover it and kind of see where their games roughly stand. Right. I mean, even uh, Guild Wars Two, when they launched the expansion ideas and like setups and hype videos for Out of the Shadows, they almost they went into like twenty three million US dollars gained in, over the last two quarters all that Heart of Storms and Out of the Shadow stuff, but it went back to kind of just a level playing field where it used to be. So they got a nice big hype boost out of it. Now it's kind of back to where it was. We'll see what happens when Out of the Shadows comes out, whether or not that's going to be another big boost to them, or uh, it's kind of plateaued, I should say. Right. Whether or not it increases and then plateaus at a higher spot, or dips and plateaus at a lower spot, we'll see what happens. Good luck, NCSoft. Yeah. We're rooting for you. I'd love to see more quarterly reports from other companies, but not a lot of them do it because they don't want to show what they, well, what they're winning and losing. Like the Nintendo reports are always fun to see because right. it. Then not only is it like, hey, here's kind of what we've been doing money wise, but then you see how sad and out of touch their investors are with their with their target audience. Yep. Oh my it's god! Hilarious. The Nintendo reports are are sadly hilarious. Like if anybody at Nintendo that goes to those reports that speaks at those reports is any way versed with games like has a kid that plays games and they like start speaking the, the questions that they get are just so asinine from the perspective of somebody that knows even a tiny bit about video games yeah it's fucking the hilarious like, what in the world like it's very it's very the shareholders of nintendo were very much like they're very old school investors in the sense of it doesn't really matter so long as we make money and like i so live like, i think one person even asked them what they made like what what, what does your company do like, bitch, we're Nintendo. Yeah. We've been around 100 years. That's not know what we do. It's so fucking dumb. And, like, I live in a world where most people I interact with on a daily basis at least know a little bit about video. Like, I was, I was walking around work, and I see the CIO of my company standing in the middle of a hallway just looking down. And he's old, so I thought he was dead. <laughs> like, I was just, like, I, I go up to him, and I kind of, like... I look and try to like see his face to see if he's like alive. And he goes, do you need something? I'm like, oh yeah, I just wanted to make sure you're okay. And he's like, no, 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 Pokemon Go. And he holds up Pokemon Go on his phone. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, okay, all right, I get it. Sure, I'm going to go back to my office and pretend this never happened. <laughs> did you, did you, I don't know if we covered it ever, but did you hear what happened when investors found out that po uh, Nintendo does not completely own Pokemon Go Yeah, they, as an IP? They don't. Yeah, well, oh, they, no, but did you hear they, what happened? They, they own Pokemon as an IP. They don't so own Pokemon Go, the game. Yeah, yeah. so what happened was people don't know that Nintendo only owns 30% only owns of the Pokemon company, which is what creates Pokemon games. Uh, Pokemon Go is created by Ni Ni Niantic and by Pokemon Company. So people, when they bought tons of stock in Nintendo, they assumed that it was Nintendo's game. It technically is, and it technically oh. isn't. It's Nintendo's IP. So oh. Nintendo put out this, like, I don't know if they put it out, but someone mentioned it about Nintendo going like, hey, um, it's great that you invested in us because we love the fact that you invested in us. And we know why you're investing in us. We're super cool with that because we love our property and we think that you should always continue to contribute to it. But we didn't make Pokemon Go. And then that 25% cap they made in like the first two days each Just day. Just gone. Plummeted. Yup. Plummeted. And I'm sure they did like, that on purpose. I'm sure yeah, they didn't I, want like that false inflation. I'm sure they were I, like, I, "Oh sure fuck, we got to stop this before it gets way too big." Because then it creates. A, I, it, you would think that like, it literally the adage of "mo money, mo problems." Yeah, very true in this case. Yeah, because they're like, "Yeah, great, they're supporting us," but um, this is 
this could actually be an issue for us. Yeah, that was probably smart on their behalf. But yeah, we're no, kind of trending. I'm pretty sure that their investors will not be happy with that when it, become, it comes well, time for the roll call. I'm sure that their stock's going to end up higher than it was eventually, even and if hey, it has to recover from this roller coaster say, fucking right? plummet. And I will say, if you're ever going to create a new experimental Nintendo platform and they've yet to fucking do it, put Pokemon in a fucking MMO setting with real time action combat like Blade and Soul. That's never gonna happen. Go all the fucking That's money. Never gonna happen. I will give you everything that my daughter has in her thing. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you my daughter. <laughs> oh no, not that far. <laughs> like, think about it. Think about it. Come on, Nintendo. If you legitimately had a decent, I'm not looking for hyper realistic looking Pokemon. Oh god. Take that art style. Put it in a great in-game engine. Make happen. it multiplayer. Put it, he just says ARG, put it in a great in-game engine like it's the easiest fucking thing Dude, in the world. Dude, fucking take the World of Warcraft game engine and make a Pokemon game out don't of it. Don't fucking do I'll that. I'll fucking play that game forever. Ugh, don't do that. Ugh, you need a new one. Don't. Can you imagine a Pokemon raid on like on Mewtwo? Oh, God. Oh, that'd be sick, though. <laughs> what? Right? Players come out, they pull out their Pokemon, and everyone's taking shots at Mewtwo. You have like a team of six on you. You... You, 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 your raid wipe is everyone's belt of Pokemon gets white, knocked, uh, fainted. Come on! I mean, Where is the idea this? is cool. The idea is cool. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Speaking maybe, of World maybe, of Warcraft. Maybe he can be Smash Brothers like. Speaking of World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft, oh, yeah, Legion? Legion? Region? Have you done. Uh, so, Legion, uh, we, we have more Legion content available to us. Yes. Uh, you can do the Broken Shore scenario, and you can participate in limited time events um, with limited time gear. So, yeah, it's all cosmetic gear, if I'm not mistaken. At least it can be yeah. cosmetically. But what's basically happening, if you haven't been listening to us, I'll go over it again because why not? Why not? Everyone else is, but why not? Why not? So the Legion pre-event has started. Whether or not you have Legion, it doesn't matter because you could do the Broken Shore scenario. Yes. I do not have Legion, and I was able to do the Broken Shore scenario. You So you have done the Broken Shore scenario? I have. Both sides? Have, uh, no, just, just the Lion side. And uh, they are saying that... I don't want to go spoilers into what happens in it, but they are they, Blizzard is talking about possibly giving players the option to skip the Broken Shore scenario when they hit multiple like alts. Like if you have your fourth alt oh, sure. to level 100, yeah. they're, they're considering giving an option to skip it. But there are a few quests that you have to do that will get you into Legion comment, content. But you also can participate in these limited time in-game events and get the gear without having to have Legion as well because I was doing them. Uh Unfortunately, if you want to play a Demon Hunter, you should have pre-ordered before August 9th, I believe, because only those people that have pre-ordered Legion can play their Demon Hunters right now until August 30th, which is when Legion launches. Now, the Legion pre-event is simply this. The Legion has invaded. The Broken Shore scenario is just the beginning. The audio logs led up to the Broken Shore scenario with Gul'dan unlocking the Tomb of Sargeras that causes the rift that allows the demons to come out. You with the Horde and the Alliance go there to knock them back and you find out that it might not go quite as planned. And all across Azeroth, portals have been ripping open and the Legion is attacking areas that are pretty close to starting zones. And as long as you're level 10, this content scales to you and you can go do it. I did it on my level 10 Rogue and I, I gained in like the one scenario, I gained like three levels. So level 12 or 13 right now, I, I believe. Hmm. And that's just with like half my heirloom gear. So some players, like Bellular has a video that he broke it down. Like, you can gain this much experience on a character at level 10 or level 17 with no gear. And then here's what happens with heirloom gear. This is what happens with heirloom gear and flasks of experience. And if you want to level alts, this pre-event might be one of the best ways to do it. That, yeah. are, that breaks up the monotony of just queuing for dungeons. Because Fuck as tons the, of XP. Yep. And even better, here's where it goes. As the event goes on the Legion incursions will happen more and more frequently. So the closer we get to Legion launching, the faster you can level your alts. Which is... It is fucking genius. Amazeballs. Or you can be like Krug and just buy level 100. Did we talk about that yet on stream yet? I don't think so. Do you want it? Because it's, it's not embarrassing. It's just funny. It's not embarrassing. I mean, you, you can so, talk about it. That's fine. So correct me at any point if I'm wrong. Here, so we're I'll, 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 I'll tell the story and then you can okay. you can add your disdain for my life afterwards. <laughs> so I pre-purchased Legion with the Warlords of Drainer bundle a while ago. And when you did that, they gave you a level 90 and a level 100 boost. And then after the Legion class changes came out, I uh, auto-leveled my monk to level 100 without looking into any of the changes for Mistweaver, which is what I want to play. And then I realized that I didn't like the Mistweaver changes at all. 
Uh, and so I was like, fuck, I need a new healer. And so I just made a priest and I was like playing priest. And I'm like, damn, I like priest so much. I'm going to level this to 90 because I have my 90 boost. I leveled him to 90. And then I was running around just chilling. Doc had or Adrock had a 100. Indigo had a 100. And they were like doing shit without me. And I was like, man, this sucks. And so I go into the store and I buy level 100 boost. And then I use that on the same priest. So I boosted my priest to 90. And then I boosted my priest to 100. And so theoretically, not realistically, but theoretically, wait, I spent $120 wait, wait. leveling yeah. a priest. So you bought to Legion for 60, which gave you 90 and 100. You took that 90 boost, applied it to your priest. That's 60 bucks done right there. It's not, it's then not, that's not, that's not how that works. First of all, first of all, I had two levels. Did you use it? Did you use it? Yes or no? I had two boosts. It did gave me two yes boosts. No? For that $60. Did you, did you oh, yes no? what else did it give me? Game content that you, yes everybody no? paid for. So I didn't just, you can't just say that the entire $60 was that one boost. Did you use it? Yes or no? Yes. Answer the question. I did. Yes. Then you then bought an additional boost and used that, correct? Is it weird that I feel like. So the, you paid for those two boosts. I feel. Ergo, you spent $120 <laughs> for level 100 character in a little Warcraft. Is it weird in, that. In, in 20 minutes. Is it weird that. I feel like our mouths are close because we're both close to our microphones. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what happened was we're all playing and Krug doesn't say a whole lot. We're just kind of like having fun and just shitting around. And he's like, you're back. I'm like, okay, no problem. And uh, we knew he was playing a priest. We knew he got to 90s. So we're like, okay, cool. We'll go and try. And I was at 93. Him. Thank you very much. 93. So you weren't too far off. So we weren't, didn't think much Seven of it. Seven levels for and $60. He came, back, he came back a little bit later and he, the priest shows back up and went, did you, did you, did you, what? How did you get a level hundred already? He goes, I may or may not have bought a level. 100. <laughs> and I'm like, and I said, it was okay, so grindy because like you obviously leveled your priest to level ninety three, right? I, I also used the ninety boost on the priest. I'm like what? <laughs> yep, it was so grindy. It was, I didn't fair, expect it to be that unbearable. To be fair, it's your money, and you make enough yeah. money to do it and justify it. So I'm not making fun of you. I'm not calling you out. I just thought it was the most absurd thing. That's why I'm not embarrassed. And I will. A I will. Jealous at the same time, uh, I want that amount of disposable income. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's not as much as you think. I just make bad choices sometimes. Everybody does. <laughs> Everybody has their character flaws, right? Mine right? is my forgetfulness and my inability to handle money and my messiness. And yeah, right. Your inability oh, to handle money is very apt right now. I'm just going to keep going with this list forever. So we should probably just stop with that so list. There's one more thing for Will of Warcraft that's tied to it. This well, was really, really cool. <laughs> and because I also love this guy and his series and he was on it. There was a YouTube channel called Men at Arms and there's a, a, a sequel called Men at Arms Reforged. Mm. They follow the Baltimore Brothers with Knife and Shield. That's the second one. But... Uh, Tony Swatton did the first Man at Arms, and I fucking love it. And if you don't know what it is, he is a Hollywood prop maker. The oh, brothers are actually yeah, man. As well. And so Blizzard went to Tony Swatton, who's based in L.A., and he said, uh, hey, uh, you've already done some Warcraft stuff before. You did Gorehal, I believe, uh, which is really, really cool. He also did like League of, League of Legends stuff. He also has done Mjolnir for the Thor movies. He did weapons, I believe, for Lord of the Rings. He definitely did weapons for Pirates of the Caribbean. So they asked him to create Doomhammer. And so he went with his assistants and he forged Doomhammer. And he makes this point when you do stuff like hammers, one, video game proportions are obviously made for visual, not logical sure. sense. Yeah. So if you literally, if you try to dual wield this size hammer... This would be like four to five hundred pounds of steel. Right. No mere man or even video game orc can lift it, no matter how big their biceps are. Right. That's the that's the illusionist belief we accept when we play these kind of games. But his job is to turn that into a usable functional weapon, and he's able to get it down to about fifty pounds. That's fully lit up. That's like so lava's heavy, beneath though. it. That's full of steel and and hand car or not hand car, but like belt carved wood to replicate a more functional using doom hammer, and then to show it off. They just go and use it, which is the best part about these videos. Because you assume, oh, it's like, oh, it's like props. Then I go to a Comic Con and I can buy the 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 Thord from like that place. Like, no, they, the Baltimore Brothers and Tony use will use prop weapons, but when they do Man at Arms and Reforge, they try to use them as like possible battle ready. Uh, they not might just break not under necessarily battle ready, but like just sturdy. Yeah, they yeah. may not be able to like kill someone. Like you can't. 
I mean, you probably could take this hammer and kill someone with it. To be when honest, when you're yeah, fifty pounds. But they're of not hammer, they're not flimsy damage. props. They're not things that you have to like. If you're working on a show and you're like handing out props, you just uh, be careful. Give me the props. Let me set them on the table so that yeah. you don't break them. This isn't that. This is like throw it across the room and it breaks through the wall and it's totally fine on the other side. Like there it, are actual YouTube uh, blacksmiths that will create legit battle weapons based yeah. off these designs. Tony and the Baltimore Brothers don't do that as much. It's it's more fu high functioning props. Yeah. But if you live in the LA area, if I'm not mistaken, Tony's shop will occasionally do tours. Ooh. Yeah, and he's done stuff like had or like they've done stuff like uh, Wolverine's claws. They did uh, Leona's sword for from League of Legends, and that's one of the coolest ones. Cause I think Riot commissioned him for it. If I'm not mistaken, and they do them all the time. Like he did. I think Tony the did the Buster Sword from Final Fantasy VII. So now Doomhammer is part of the collection, and I'm guaranteeing you is probably somewhere at Blizzard right now, which. If, would be pretty cool to see either way. Yeah. But, I, oh my God. They smash like garden gnomes. It's super cool. And beakers and vases, 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 vases. Va oh, the vases. obligatory watermelon. Yeah. I mean, the only thing cooler than that is watching like little weightlifting women crush the watermelon between their thighs. Like, oh, that's both scary and fucking cool. But this is weapons. But that's enough of tangentially tied MMO news. To MMO. <laughs> so I thought I'll, that was cool. It was pretty. It was pretty light on major news this week for most other games. If you have any games that we haven't covered yet and you want to talk a little more about it, please let us know. We try to go over them, but these were the more interesting, high-profile stories of the week. Yeah. Uh, next up on the docket is slash LFG, which is where we discuss beta games, games that you either can play in open or closed beta right now, or that may not even be in beta yet. Just kind of like, like you may not even heard about it yet. The sparkle in a developer's eye. That was a semen joke. Click. Uh, so, as per the huge, we got some Crowfall news for you guys. Uh, so, Crowfall is starting something called the Ace Q&A, which is uh, the... Oh, fuck. What's the name of the fucking studio? Uh, oh, fuck. Art, Art Crafts. Yeah, Art Craft Entertainment Q&A. That's what Ace stands for, Art Craft Entertainment. Thank you, Doc. Uh, so, they're doing these Q&As. They're short, sweet, to the point. They just take a couple questions that people submit, and they just answer them. Uh, and then the video's over. It's really great. So we're going to go over the answers to the questions for this week. First of all, in Crowfall, for those of you that don't know, they have a like particle system destructible environments. Yeah, that allows them to basically create destructible environments. And it's really fucking cool to watch for sure. It's definitely not like done yet because it's kind of slow. Yeah, it's, it's a system that's probably an alpha or beta, just like the game, uh, because it, it makes everything lag quite a bit when it happens. Um, now, but when you do destructible environments, it's a lot of variables. So people just assume that it's just cool to look at. Right. right? But that's not the case. They got a question saying, will falling bricks damage people? Uh, and yes, apparently they will. And it's not even like, a, oh, we might add this in. The, they're just like, yeah, it is. And they actually cut back to a clip from a video from ages ago where somebody was explaining like the idea behind the sieges. And he's like, isn't it going to be so cool when you turn around the corner and you see an enemy mage and you just shoot a fireball at him and then the wall behind him collapses and kills him? Like, they want that to be a thing that happens. They do say that it's not a common scenario currently in beta. Like, they don't see a lot of people that are dumb enough to just sit next to the wall and not understand that literally everything behind them can kill them. Uh, but, they, yeah, they want it to be a thing, which I think is super awesome because that kind of lends a whole layer of something you have to be aware of. And if not only that... it's much more common, I wouldn't be surprised if you hear players just bitching and moaning on the forums, but if it's No, they're going to have to super go fuck themselves if they start bitching and moaning about, oh, I got killed the by fire. the environment. Uh, yeah, exactly. If you are that bad, if you keep getting killed by the wall, stay away from the wall. How about that? How about stay away from the wall? Uh, they say an uh, like infinitely more common scenario, which I think is great, is people on top of the wall... Like having to like falling with the debris and dying that way, which <laughs> I, I also think is really cool because, yeah, you have this wall, like this huge structure and it gives you like a height advantage and all this, but it comes with the cost. And that is if the wall beneath you crumbles, you're, you're going, you're going to either slide down into your enemies, like riding bits of wall, or you're just going to die. Uh, so it's I kind of like to just have like a, a people on discord and like the wall is crumbling. Everybody jump. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's going to make for such great moments. That's why I'm so excited about that specific feature in that game. All right. <laughs> that was a pretty good scream. I might 
make that a all right he's actually gone he's actually off camera oh he's back <laughs> yay uh so they're talking about strongholds uh and so there's somebody asked will there be a blueprint system for strongholds and the context behind this question is that right now you can buy a stronghold that is pre-built and kind of deploy it that way but that's not the plan for the game that's just like a perk for pre-purchasing or for contributing at certain levels um so what they're asking is uh after this park goes away and you can't use these pre-built structures anymore, people are going to have to essentially build strongholds from scratch. They will get a wall piece and a gate piece and like a tower piece and like a home piece or whatever. And just out of those smaller chunks, they will build a functioning stronghold. So they're asking, will you have a blueprint that essentially places all the pieces for me in the right place so that like it saves me time? Uh, if I have the correct materials and their answer was kind of leaning to the no side. Like they said that they might consider doing it in the future, but me, the salty, you know, developer language, that just means no. Uh, and they're basically saying it's not necessary because it's pretty easy to build them right now. Uh, apparently the, the, the pieces that you get are large enough that it doesn't really take very long and they snap together. So like, you don't have to really like work on the exact, like, Oh, I need to move this an inch up so that this thing can rest here. Like they just kind of snap together like Legos. So they're not necessarily looking into that, but they did mention something interesting. So currently they have a couple buildings in the game that are, uh, that exist, they're buildings, they have doors, but you can't go in them because they're too small to like actually accommodate a character model. So what they've done is they've basically increased the, the minimum scale of buildings so that they are at least a certain size so that every building should be able to be entered. And then any building that they didn't want to scale up like that, they just made it into like a tent or something so that it's like exposed. You don't have to like open a door to go inside it. You just kind of like you walk around in it and then leave it like a little more. So it makes everything feel a little more functional, uh, which I like a lot. They also asked what happens when your vessel dies. Now, for those of you that don't know in Crowfall, the player character that you are in is just a vessel for your godliness. It is not you. Uh, so they're basically asking how resurrection works. Uh, and there are three methods, and this is really early stages of developing this system. Yeah, this so, one's going to be interesting. Yeah, this one's interesting. But it, they did say it's really early stages of developing this system. So this may change completely, but this is the answer they have for now. So when you die, your crow, which is the representation of your godly spirit or whatever. Your soul. Yeah, your soul. Resurrects at the nearest graveyard, just like in, in WoW. Uh, so you have three options there. You can either uh, fly back to where your corpse is and go inside of it, and then you are back to where you were, uh, uh, obviously barring any you know things that happened to your corpse while you were gone. Uh, you can create a new or basically load a new character at that point, and then that will be your vessel instead. Or you can pray, which is interesting, so praying is basically like in WoW when you res at the crypt, but it's way worse. So praying is apparently going to take a super fucking long time to happen. Like you're going to click the pray button and wait for a bit. Uh, your body will come to you and then like every single item on your person will experience decay, which is basically like damage. Uh, and they're basically trying to make it the most undesirable option. Like an option that people will it's only use if their body is unreachable apparently. and they don't have any other characters to play that would like work in that situation. Like I need this character and I cannot get to his body prey. And then it comes back. So they, and they, they're not even sure they're going to keep it in. Like either it's going to be the most indesirable thing ever, or they're going to remove it completely. Those are, that's kind of the vibe I got from, uh, from them as far yeah. as that was concerned. Uh, and then they also talked about uh, something about imports and exports. I didn't really know what that meant. I'm really sorry. I think it has something to do with the items you get to take back to like the main instance or the items you bring from the main instance to whatever world you're on, but I'm not hundred percent sure. So I didn't put anything down because I don't want to give you like wrong information. I will look into it and maybe get back to you guys next week if I remember. But if not, obviously the video link is in the show notes so you can go ahead and watch. There was also a really dumb question that I didn't put in here because it had absolutely no value whatsoever. So that was omitted intentionally. Uh, yeah, that's the Crowfall news this week. Um, I'm sorry, Indigo, for stealing your 
segment that you love to do so much. <laughs> but yeah, we really only have two bigger games we want, or two games that are more interesting that are coming up. Yeah. One of which is Guardians of Ember. They're being developed by Rune Waker Games. Rune Waker Games had had a game called God, it's such a weird game name. It's um, God, what is the name of it? It's like. Fajin Rune, The Runes of Magic and Dragon's Prophet. So Rune Waker and Incel Games, they created Runes of Magic and Dragon's Prophet. They have a new game coming out called Guardians of Ember. The reason why I say this is because they're going into Steam Early Access for about three to five months this September. And it's an MMO, but their field of view is similar to, say, Diablo. And Path of Exile. So it's like kind of like Marvel Heroes in the sense of it's an MMO where everyone's in the same world or heavy instances areas, but it's all top-down perspective with skills. It does feel very... Like, looking at the UI instantly makes me think of Path of Exile and Diablo. So they're they're saying, you know, they have a dual-class option at level 15. There's uh, tons of quests to do. Totally random dungeons in, like, different districts of the world or areas of the world, uh, classes to go with, crafting, housing, and a bunch of other stuff. So I would say go check that out. I do not know what's going to happen with monetization after early access. You do have to buy in for early access, as most of those titles tend to be. But do not... We have no information from Rune Waker or Incel whether or not that will continue past launch, or even how long it will launch, because the game looks super pretty already. Again... Yeah. It's an early access. This is, is like Skyrim. This like these screenshots are Skyrim level pretty. When okay, so I don't know if early access is the right place to put this game. It should have just been a beta game. This does not look like an alpha style game. I, I don't even know what you consider alpha and beta anymore. Because these are games that are coming out surprisingly polished graphically wise, buggy wise. Like an alpha game, it used to be, hey, this is the bare bones like Crowfall. A lot of that early, 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 early stuff is rightfully considered alpha. It was barely functioning. You're gonna find a bunch of shit that's not even textured or even fully mapped no, out. Crowfall still definitely fall. like I played Crowfall recently and I was still getting bugs in the menus. Like Crowfall's yeah, still buggy alpha. as shit. Yeah, that's an alpha where you like something bad that bad happens. There's no textures on anything. There's like a rough blocking of the map. Yeah, but or like but little textures that say texture missing coming soon. Smiley face. That's my yeah. favorite. Guardi Guardians of Ember looks much more polished than that. Yeah. I don't know why it's in free to or early access, but it's going there, which is whatever. Okay. <laughs> you want it? I brought it up because it looks really interesting and it looks sure. really fucking pretty. Yeah. And I, I'm, a, I'm kind of a sucker for pretty games. Uh, I, I, yes, pretty games. But also, I really want. I, I couldn't quite get it into Path of Exile, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind having an MO in the in the vein of Diablo, and I really couldn't get into Marvel either. So there's another option that's not super eastern mmo and also not super tra sandboxy traditional mmo so it's something new and different why not and then warhammer 40k something super old <laughs> uh yes and no uh they, this is their next crack at a warhammer 40k mmo and most recently this week they decided they're going to finally unleash the orcs now i believe they only really have up until this point the space marines all blocked out and if you don't know what warhammer is it is the spiritual predecessor to WoW. It's developed by Games Workshop in the UK. It's dark, 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 grim, dark, dark, dark. Where even Reaper and his trapdoor, three doors down, music play video, Spotify list can't okay. touch how dark this shit is. <laughs> okay. But orcs, man, orcs in Warhammer are fucking fun. They have their own language and vernacular. Like they call bullets daka because they make the daka 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 sound when they when they fire off. Yep. They. That's they the one thing I know Wah! about this IP. The one is the thing. Orcs, the orcs yeah. are super fun, the way they handle things. This IP is super old. Like, yeah. this IP is giga old. And it used to be, what was it? Was this a, uh, a like, tabletop, it's tabletop game? Yeah, it still is a tabletop where you, like, paint little miniatures and it's, like, a yep. strategy map. And then it became a video game, I think, after that. And my yeah, cousin they, used to play it. My cousin's, like, 10, 11 years older than me. And so he used to say the DACA thing all the time. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? But I was We're like, going to walk. I was, like, eight, so it didn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, now I grew up. Now I understand what it means, and it's fucking hilarious. Uh, every time I hear DACA, I get nostalgia trips out my ass. Yeah, the War Boys are out, and obviously it's it's also an, also an alpha. There are footage, I believe, like uh, Zora and the Bear has a little breakdown of them on YouTube, 
And he's basically saying, hey, they're kind of really unbalanced, but the flavor is mostly there. Sure. And it being an alpha game, there's some weird animations going on with like run cycles and with abilities and hitboxes. But if you want something a little more grim, dark, dark fantasy, their Warhammer's back. It's not just the old school Warhammer, it's 40K, which I kind of personally enjoyed the old Warhammer fantasy world better than 40K. The whole super grim, dark, edgy thing was never really for me. He keeps saying grim, dark over and over again. It's starting Dude, to lose its meaning. This thing, this thing is like every 12 year old boy's wet dream when they just all wanted to wear black trench coats and listen to Insane Clown Posse. That's what I always think of with. with I, I don't. I can't remember it. ever wanting to listen to Insane Clown Posse in my entire life. I, I, I just had a. People that used to play 40K where I grew up were not people I was big fans of. So it's, it just, that's what it reminds me of. And Warhammer Fantasy, I just tend to have a little bit of a better look at. And my, 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 my sci-fi preferences aren't so this dark. Like, I like Cthulhu I don't think it's like that stuff. dark. I, I don't know why you keep saying that. Like, it's... The world of 40K is super bleak. It's super... It's not... It's, yeah, it's bleak and it's violent. But it, I don't think it's dark. I think it's meant to be kind of, like, grimly humorous. I don't get dark from it at all. I don't think all. there's any real humor outside the orcs. Yeah, the orcs are fucking hilarious. They're just so it, dumb. I don't think it's even intentional humor. I think the orcs were just, well, like, weird, it, dumb motherfuckers that grew from mushrooms. And we say weird words weirdly, so... There's your comic relief. Yeah, and I enjoy it. I think it's a great game. And, I mean, I, th- I think it's a great IP. I don't know anything about how this I, game I'm plays. I'm just curious about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to keep following this because I'm interested. Yeah. You have my attention. Well, there you go. Anyways, I think that's the show for the day, right? That's yeah. mostly it. There's the only thing I wanted to mention on that real quickly was there's a really fun article on Massively OP, oh. a site that Indigo hates vehemently, that talks about some uh, games that ha- that were from MMOs that never really launched, and it's kind of interesting to go back into like the the vault of MMO history, because games like Middle Earth Online that came around right around. Lord of the Rings Online, Ultima X, when that was still a thing. Imperator, oh, this is super interesting. I didn't yeah. see this in the notes before. I forgot about Mythos being a thing where it was it was supposed to be like a Diablo clone that I was super excited about and never heard a thing about it. I, it's just little things like that that I find awesome to throw into like the, the vault of MMO history. Nice. Cool. Check it out. It'll be in the show notes. Uh, until next week, uh, we very much appreciate you stopping by. Uh, if you liked the show and you're listening to it on YouTube, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, and all that jazz. If you're listening to the podcast, leave a comment, rate the podcast. Uh, if you didn't like the show, do those things anyways because we want to know what we can do to improve ourselves, and uh, we appreciate constructive criticism. Or if you just want to be a flaming troll, fine. That'll be fun to get on my phone as a notification while I'm at work. I can show people, like, hey, look, somebody hates me. It'll be great. Uh, Ad Rock, if somebody wants to find you on the internet, where can they do that? The best place to find me is on Twitter at Adrock Draws. Uh, Twitch, it's Doc Draws because I can't change it to Adrock because I'm too lazy to get a new account. I will probably get some lunch and then stream some more after this if you're if you're live with us. And I do some occasional uh, streaming this week and like some drawing streaming. So yeah, nice. keep your eye out on the yeah. Twitter. It always tells you when. He's a really good artist. You should watch him do that. Uh, my name is Krug, not Desarian. I don't know why it says Desarian here. You can get me at KrugQT on Twitter. Again. No, it's just weeks. for this one he frame. On. It's just for this one frame, and I didn't know there was a slash EL thing, so I didn't check it. You're an asshole. My name's Desarian. at Krug. Go check out Desarian stuff. It's on YouTube. Because one, he's cool. <laughs> now that we have his name up here. And two, he came on the show like two weeks ago. <laughs> I know, because we never use this card. Anyways, we don't need to have this conversation on stream, you fucking pleb. I'm, I'm, you know what? You spent 120 bucks on a priest. I'm giving you shit for this. If you want to email me, Adrock, and Indigo at the same time, you can email yell at qtimes.com. If you want to tweet all three of us at the same uh, time, the you can tweet price of holy healing. at underscore qtimes. And we will see you all next week. Indigo should be back by then, so it should be all three of us again. And uh, see you next Bye. time.